Hey, if you're like me, you still worry about email threats. It seems like just this nagging problem that continues to be an issue for enterprise teams. So stick around today. I've got an expert here, my friend Mike uh, Britton from uh, Abnormal Security. Mike's going to tell us a little bit about some of the work that's going on in the company, give his perspective as a CISO uh, working in this area, and maybe there'll be some tips that you pick up. So I hope you stick around. I'm Ed Amoroso from Tag Cyber. I want to welcome you to our discussion today. I have my friend Mike Britton, who is the Chief Information Security Officer for a cybersecurity vendor. I'm sure you've all heard of Abnormal Security, a really good uh, company working in the area of email risk and uh, avoidance of business email compromise, that kind of thing, a topic everybody needs to deal with. I'm going to ask Mike to share a little bit of his perspective, both as a practitioner and also as someone supporting a, an awful lot of companies using the platform. So, hey, Mike, uh, welcome to the discussion. Thanks for making time today. Thanks, Ed. Thanks for having me. Mike, why, why don't we just do a quick summary of what you guys do at the company, and then we can get into a little bit of the tech and the um, operational issues, but share a little bit about the abnormal security. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Abnormal Security is a API-driven uh, email security solution. We protect uh, Google Workspace and Microsoft 365 users. And the way we do it, uh, like I mentioned, is we connect through the API, so we're not changing your mail routing. And we look at uh, everything coming into your environment. We look at it from a identity, who the person is, behavior, how they're behaving, and the content within the, the email itself to really be able to ensure that the only thing that lands in your user's inboxes are normal, good emails and we keep everything else out. The other interesting factor about what we do is we also free up your SOC and your security team's time. A lot of the uh, arduous task of all the emails that get reported and you have to go research or you have to respond to uh, email related incidents, we automate a lot of that, we take up a lot of um, we free up a lot of your security team's time to work on uh, other higher priorities. And so that, in a nutshell, is what Abnormal Security does. Mike, it seems like a lot of this has really evolved from the really early days when you did sort of AV protection on content, and then we were all buying secure email gateways, SEGs that um, steer your email around and do stuff. I guess things have evolved considerably since those uh, early days. Am I, am I reading that right? Absolutely. You know, bad guys, they've, they've gotten smarter. They, you know, probably five or six years ago, they would, you know, have a single bad domain and they would go and they would attack multiple companies with that bad domain. And eventually we'd catch up and we'd block them all. And it was this cat and mouse game of, you know, we find it, we stop it and we prevent future attacks. Well, bad guys learned. They've pivoted, they use Office 365, they use Google Workspace, they use single Gmail accounts to attack a single victim and burn that account down and, and move on to the next. And so they've they've really pivoted their attack methods. They also take advantage of social engineering. They take advantage of the fact that we use uh, mobile devices that sometimes obfuscate some of the deeper signals of what the message is and who the message really is coming from. And they, take advantage of the fact that we are largely in, in a SaaS driven world these days. And so we all use uh, other modern applications like a ServiceNow or a Zoom or Dropbox or other things where they can pretend to mimic those type of communications that come in through email and, and get you to click on links and either give your credentials or, or do something else that's uh, very nefarious. Yeah, Mike, we've all seen these things. and. One thing we don't, most of us don't know is where the kid, who's doing it? Like, is it some, is it some kid in a bedroom somewhere? Is it a nation state? Is it all the above? What's been your experience? I, I know it's a tough, it, you, attribution is difficult, but in general, where, where are these attacks coming from and why would somebody do this? If you think about BEC in general, uh, you can go all the way back to the Nigerian prince scams and Lo and behold, a lot of this stuff does come out of Nigeria, and there's a, a variety of reasons why. Some of it is economic conditions. Uh, some of it is a lax law enforcement. Some of it's just an opportunity to earn some quick and easy money with low risk. Uh, we see it all over the place. It's not just Nigeria, even though a lot of it comes from there. 
Um, you know, you could go out and look on the dark web and other places and find, uh, you know, phishing kits as a service. I can automate it, much like most companies use email marketing tools. Bad guys use similar type of things to launch uh, phishing campaigns. And so uh, a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of uh, creativity and the ability to understand how to use cloud email and, and mine and market data off of the uh, Internet. And I can go and, and launch some pretty effective BEC campaigns. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the platform, about abnormal security. I'm curious what the um, what maybe at a high level, what what sort of strategies technology strategies are you using? Are you filtering, blocking, diverting, sifting, guessing, modeling, <laughs> probably all of the above. But what, what, like, what are some verbs that help to explain the strategy that's used by your platform designers to deal with this risk? Yeah, I would, I would say probably first and foremost, machine learning and behavioral data science. Uh, the team that originally created Abnormal, our founders, they come from ad tech, which is an area where I talk about behavior, behavioral data science and we all think of, I flip on Netflix and it knows what I should be watching next. Or, um, you know, I pull out my phone and I'm getting targeted ads that tell me something <clears throat> I need to go buy. And it, you know, sometimes it even has that creepy aspect of, you know, is my phone listening to me or, you know, how does it know that I shop there? And so that same sort of data science and machine learning they, we've taken it and we've applied it to stopping bad guys and, and really understanding what's at the heart of the message and the communication. Is this something that is a normal flow of communication? Is you know Mike emailing Ed from the same spots and locations? Is he using the same browsers? Is he using the same tone and context? Or is there something different that maybe that's not Mike? Maybe that's someone pretending to be Mike or maybe someone's taken over Mike's account and we really use that technology and those models and machine learning and, and data science to really be able to ferret that out and, and stop those attacks. Just to make sure I, I've got it. So rather than sort of just sift through, like in the old days, you match on a virus, you drop it or something, you guys are building these predictive models that I, I presume kind of guess at the conditions, look at training data, guess at the conditions under which the very high probability that something is, um, you know, a, a bad email. Is that the way it works? Like the, when you say modeling, I assume that means being able to predict and and somewhat confidently or accurately determine good from bad. I'm, I just want to make sure I'm thinking about that properly. Yeah, I'd say instead of the word guess, I would say understanding the frequency and the likelihood and, and really being able to say, OK, we see where there, you know, there's been a thousand emails back and forth between Mike and Ed, and we've never seen this occur in those a thousand messages that have gone through. And now we see it for the first time. And it's not just one single signal that is indicative of a malicious attack. We're looking at tens of thousands of signals and you know, correlating them together. And, and that's part of the power of machine learning and, and artificial intelligence. You're able to take large quantities of data and signals and really kind of sift through and find that needle in the haystack, find that thing that, you know, maybe not necessarily something that's visible to the human eye, but that we can pull all these data points together and say, hey, that's that's a bad email. That's a that's an attack. That's an account that's been compromised. On the, this topic of signals that you point out, let, let's take a few that are sort of obvious and you can help me understand maybe the metadata that would be useful, like uh, certainly the behavior of someone would be pretty important saying I would think their identity or at least their reported identity maybe the content that's in there you know what you can glean share a little bit there I mean, I'm, I'm assuming I'm picking valid signals that would go into the ML absolutely you, you nailed you nailed all three and just to give some context so identity maybe I'm normally logging in from Dallas Texas and all of a sudden I'm logging in from Brazil and sending you an email message or I'm always coming from a Chrome browser and now all of a sudden I'm coming from a Safari browser or maybe I, I'm using Gmail and now the underlying, uh, I bounced off a different SMTP relay or something like that that says, hey, that's, that's not Mike at that point. And then when you look at the behavior, I'm, I'm never emailing Ed about financial payment terms. I'm never emailing Ed about an invoice. And now all of a sudden I'm sending Ed an invoice saying, hey, Ed, 
I need you to pay this invoice or, hey, Ed, I need you to send me personal data or something like that where that's not that's not my normal behavior and that's not something I would normally do and that's not my interaction with Ed. Maybe it's my interaction with somebody else, but that relationship with me and Ed, that's not how we engage with each other. And then really when you look at the context and the content uh, of, of the email message, I email Ed and I say, Ed, now all of a sudden I'm emailing Ed and I'm saying Edward. And so that's not the normal tone. Or maybe we have a very informal tone with our, our communications. And now all of a sudden I've gotten extremely formal with the, the content of the email. And, and that's not indicative of how we normally engage with each other. So those are all various types of signals and examples of things that we'd be able to pull out and say, hey, that's there's something wrong with that message. That's that's not Ed, that's not Mike in, in normal communication. One of the big use cases that comes up all the time is this uh, wire transfer thing. I, I, explain to me what, um, I think business email compromise or BEC is the, a designator that's used frequently for that type of fraud. Is that something that you guys see a lot? Is that something addressed in the platform? We do. We see it a lot. It was a problem that plagued me prior to uh, implementing Abnormal back at my last job. Uh, it's a couple things. It could be a bad guy takes a lookalike domain or they spoof a domain of a, a vendor that they know you use and they're trying to get you to make a payment to a different bank account. Or in, in probably the more complicated ones, uh, you have a vendor that's been compromised. It, maybe it's a small mom and pop vendor. Who knows? It could be a, a major enterprise vendor as well. But their account's been compromised. The bad guy goes in and looks through the sent folder, says, hey, we do business with this. You know, my victim does business with this company. So I'm going to go ahead and take the exact same invoice. I'm going to change the bank account number and I'm going to flip it back around to the recipient and say, hey, we had a problem with your payment. Can you just reprocess it? And I know everybody, everybody's thinking, OK, we have processes around that. And, and I did, too. But the, the beauty of or the, the challenge with social engineering is people look at that. The first context behind it is I want to be helpful. I want to be a good corporate citizen. I want to pay it. Forget about the processes and procedures. I just did business with them. We just tried to pay them two weeks ago. And they go straight into action and, and not, you know, stepping back and, and doing the right thing. And that's why these type of attacks are extremely dangerous and, and they happen far more often than they should. And existing technologies that are out there in the marketplace are, are very poor for stopping them. And then add on that the whole process of wire transfers and ACH payments. I, they weren't built with security in mind. I, I don't know if, if you've had the same experience, but. I've had to do personal wire transfers and there's that moment where you hit send and you're like, man, I hope I got everything right because they're very clear in telling you once you hit that button, you're at a point of no return. And that's usually a large sum of money and it's a, it's a one way direction and you better got it, you better have your information correct or you're sending money to the wrong person and you'll never see it again. You know, I want to uh, maybe take a left turn and talk a little bit about automation. I we're living in a time when people who do what you and I do for a living, you know, trying to protect infrastructure, um, are maybe not seeing budget cuts so much as budget rationalization. That's been my observation. And we're kind of uh, entering a, a, a market where you, you don't see a lot of companies saying, hey, let's get rid of all our security uh, budget. That doesn't happen. But people do rationalize. Do you find that the automation here is useful? Because um, a lot of times people are hiring consultants or buying additional services or whatever, you, you're probably saving them a little money, I would think, on some of this. Um, the, the, does the economic consideration factor into the buy equation for some of your customers? It does in some of our customers. And if it doesn't, it, you know, it's only a matter of time and, and they realize that it's uh, an additional benefit. For me, it wasn't something I really factored in when I purchased Abnormal. It, it was something that we quickly realized was an added benefit to the product. At, at my last job, I probably had five to 600 emails that would come in on a regular basis, on, on a weekly basis, because, you know, once again, I want my users to click. I want my users to report. It's kind of that condition of don't trust anything. Let us security people help you out. And what that ends up with is it ends up with a lot of emails coming to my team to to vet out, to, to research, to understand, is it a good email or a bad email? And that just takes away the time of your SOC, your security analyst and others when they could be doing things that are probably higher value for them and, and higher value for the organization. And so 
That's where abnormal comes in. We automate that process. We give the real time notification back to the user of thanks for reporting and we give them the, the all clear or, hey, that was a malicious email. And then we take action on it in a highly automated fashion. We've seen many times where our customers have been able to reallocate those resources that were doing that arduous task of researching submitted phishing emails. And now they can go work on more meaningful things for the organization. And you're right, it's not you know trying to reduce headcount or eliminate people, but it's really let's do, you know humans can do things that are only humans can do. And there's a lot of opportunities for repetitive uh, tasks that are repeatable that I can go have it automated through a SOAR, or in this case, Abnormal can automate that. You know, people interact so much with their third parties and suppliers also. I would think that third party risk, third party application risk, probably a big factor here as well, right? That's usually, you, you know, you and I both have experienced uh, CISOs. That's usually in your top two or three, you know, uh, worrying about third parties. This seems like it it chips away at some, maybe not all your third party risk, but certainly the email component. I'm I'm guessing that's also a use case here. Absolutely. So if yeah. you think about third party supplier risk, uh, I can have the greatest program in the world, and yet I have anywhere from hundreds in the smallest of organizations organization to tens of thousands of suppliers and vendors for, for large fortune 500 enterprises. Yeah. And there's no way possible that I don't care how great of a third party risk or vendor management process you have, there's no way to really vet out. Are they doing all of the right things? Are they running as robust of a program as I am 24, seven, 365, I can get signals onto how well, how mature they are, but there's no real time assurance all the time that they're doing all the right things. And so, just like everything else, email is that common gateway between organizations to communicate. It's how all vendors communicate with their customers. And so if I have a vendor that's compromised or I have someone that's attacking and pretending to be a vendor, I wanna be on the lookout. I wanna be able to understand, here's where we're seeing risky vendors across the environment. Here's where we're seeing vendors that are being uh, taken over, or here's where we're seeing bad guys trying to pretend to be a vendor. This is what's happening in your environment. Here's where you have real users engaging with these vendors. So just be on the lookout that these may be, you, you might need to have a heightened sense of a risk, risk awareness and, and alertness about these type of engagements. Yeah, that's so much more powerful than like a traditional SAG or something there than anything like that. So yeah. that's really cool. I, it's a, um, a promising, <laughs> it's such a nagging problem. Everybody um, is kind of rooting for you guys in this industry to uh, get us back to unity. Hey, uh, for people watching who might have some interest in getting in touch, it, would the website be the best place for them to engage with a salesperson? The website is absolutely a, a great place to engage. Uh, people can also contact me directly, Mike at abnormalsecurity.com. Uh, one of the great things about Abnormal is the process to actually test drive it and look at your environment. We call it a risk assessment because really that's what it is. Like I mentioned, it's all API driven. It literally takes 30 to 60 seconds to plug us in in a read only mode into your cloud email security environment. And the awesome folks at Abnormal come back about a week to 10 days later with this report that says, here's the things that are getting by your existing solutions. Here's what's getting through your security controls. Here's where you have users engaging with attackers. And it's really eye-opening and powerful content that most organizations look at that and they say, hey, this is probably a bigger problem than we thought. Well, Mike, on behalf of my team at Tag Cyber and everyone watching here, I wanna thank you so much for taking some time today. Uh, always nice to catch up. And, Absolutely, uh, please always keep, enjoy being oh, here. Yeah, keep up the good work. We need you guys to uh, be at the top of your game. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Ed. And for everyone else watching, we'll see you all next time.